Amen. Listen, we serve a great God. And are you tired? <laughs> and he is greatly to be praised. Amen. Now, listen, if you can help me greet all who are viewing via social media, IG, YouTube, Instagram, however, you are seeing my face, hearing my voice. I greet you. We greet you in the strong name of Jesus, for he is Lord, and besides him, there is no other living God. So we say welcome to the place where God dwells among his people. And if this is your very first time worshiping with us in person or via social media, we say welcome home. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you. It's so good to see you. Yes, smile. Say, hey, brother. Hey, sister. I've been waiting to see you. Amen. It is our expectation as we uh, labor in God's field, we are his laborers in his field, that we are expecting him to grow and add to his kingdom daily. Amen. Uh, let me just remind you of a couple of announcements real quickly. Don't forget to those, as I've stressed in past weeks, over the past 19 months, our e-church has grew tremendously, our online church. But one of the things, amen, what, one of the things we, then, then too, I was reading here recently, and they said how, you know, uh, you, you, you've heard the saying how people church hop, and, you know, during the pandemic, people being uh, on Zoom hopping, as they say, you know, just visiting various churches via Zoom. So you just don't church up. I guess we hopping on social media now. But, but there have been a great number of you who have connected with us. And I not only want you to get connected, but to stay connected. And one of the things we have here, we have uh, created a group of tribes. And our tribes, it is a group, small group meetings via Zoom in their meetings are you meeting with people who are at various stages in life as you and these sessions are designed to empower you to strengthen you and develop you in the faith so we have tribes literally for every age uh, for married people singles uh, youth college students we also have financial uh, Zoom class, health and nutrition. So we want you to simply go to sgfc.church and scroll down and click find my tribe. And the people said amen. Then, then two, on November the 20th, someone say November the 20th. That is the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Uh, the families here at FGFC, we are going to be blessing the families in the communities with free Walmart gift cards. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. So uh, this is to help, again, somewhat mitigate the expenses. There are those who are still recovering from the pandemic. So we want to do our share or at least sh express Jesus in an uncommon way. So, But you have to come. Uh, early, that is, because as soon as the cards are uh, dispensed, once we're out, we're out. So it's to your advantage to come early. Amen. So that is Saturday, November 20th at what time? 11 a.m. Look at your neighbor and say, get the word out. Amen. Then to those of you who have been inquiring about how you may sow into the ministry, uh, we're going to list it on the screen. There are several ways whereby you can sow uh, into the ongoing work here at SGFC. I uh, don't see it on here, but she will put it up on the screen. There are several ways whereby I know you can go to sgfc.church, click give. Uh, you can also text. There's a number on there that you can. Oh, okay, here we go. You can also text the number 678-355-8242 and follow the prompts. And of course, to our old school givers who have not become somewhat acquainted with technology, uh, you can mail your uh, money orders or checks to
to P.O. Box 1945, Fayetteville, Georgia. Of course, you want to make those checks and money orders payable to Shekinah Glory Fellowship Center. Are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. You kind of, sort of, maybe sound excited. I'm going to ask you again, are you ready for the Word of God? Amen. And I want to admonish you, anytime you come to the place where the Word of God is being preached or taught, come with a spirit of expectation. Uh, a word received from God can change the course of your life. Notice a word received can change the course of your life because you can be a hearer and not a doer. But once you hear and do, it will change the course of your life. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for this, another opportunity to declare your word. I decree and declare that ears are prepared to hear hearts receptive and ready to receive. And I decree that after hearing the bread of life, feet would be swift to run and proclaim with gladness the good news of Jesus the Christ, Son of the living God. Your word declares that the entrance of your word gives light, gives understanding even to the simple. Let no one leave dismayed, confused, but all the more believers as a result of hearing the truth of your word we declare revelation flowing freely to meet the needs of everyone who is gathered. Satan, we serve you. Notice you are defeated in this place. Say it with conviction. You are defeated in this place, and you are under my feet. No weapon formed against me shall prosper, for I am the redeemed of the Lord, purchased by the blood of Jesus, and I say, I have victory, and I have it right now. Amen. And give the Lord a shout of praise. Second Peter, chapter number 1, beginning at verse 5. Let me start with the NLT just for verse 5. Over the last several weeks, we have been talking in the area on the subject living Offense free. Will you say that? Living Living. offense free. free. Get into that place in God where you are no longer or where you are living stress free, strife free, and stuck free. Get into that place, listen to this now, where nothing causes you to stumble. And that is a place, according to the Word of God, that you and I can arrive, but we must be lovers of God's Word. What do you mean lovers of God's Word? People who actually do what the Lord says to do. So when you confront it with an issue, your response should be that of what God has directed you and I to do, in spite of how it may feel. Are you with me? But we've been talking about living offense-free, and we've covered a great deal um, in that area. I mean, we covered a lot of ground. So last week, we began to talk about overcoming offenses, overcoming offenses. Now, write this down as a subhead, and we want to talk about, well, we want to get where we left off last week, and we want to talk about seven indispensable qualities Seven indispensable qualities, and they're listed right here in Peter, are seven absolutely necessary qualities. Watch this, that would aid in you and I never stumbling. And I want to say this, and one of the reasons why we spent so much time on this subject is because the Word of God lets us know that a brother who is offended or sister is harder to win than a fortified City. In other words, you can compromise a strong city. It's easier for you to get into this city than it is to get a brother or sister to release that offense. And you have to remember that to hold it is a choice. To take it is a choice. It's going to happen. But it's up to you and I 
to not allow that thing to take root. And another reason why it's so serious because I gave you some stats, and according to uh, these stats, it said that at any given time, 80% or more of congregants in local uh, churches are offended. 80%. So if we were to use that as a gauge today, that would mean 80% of you are offended at somebody either in here or out there. And here's the thing. It's not so much the offense. It's when you allow the offense to take root. But you're going to be offended, but you don't have to allow that offense to take root. Are you with me? So well, how do I know when it's taking root? When there's rebellion, there's slander, there's lying, there's strife, hatred, jealousy, bitterness, rage. Resentment, unforgiving, murder, even for some. Are you here? And these are just some of what happens when a person's allowed, when a person allowed him or herself to take hold of an offense. Now, in Luke 17, we've seen, and I want you to write this down. This bears repeating uh, some things that we need to understand is number one, that Jesus said, it's impossible that no offenses should come. So say this, offenses are going to come. I don't care how long you've been saved, how saved you are, offenses are going to come. Now, <clears throat> then two, he said, make sure that you are not the one who's creating or causing one to stumble. So number one, I know offense is coming. Number two, I don't want to be the one causing the offense. And number three, uh, something else that's important that we found in Luke 17, um, and you can write this down for your learning, particularly between verses 1 through 3, that we are to take heed to ourselves. In other words, we must stand guard. We must guard our hearts. So in, uh, when he says take heed to yourselves, you make sure that you guard yourselves. <laughs> Why? Because the opportunity to be offended will come. Are you with me? Then, to, of course, he also tells us something else to note there is that we should forgive. We forget about that. Are you with me? Now, just for your hearing, that word offense, of course, it's the Greek word scandalin. And it gives the, it's a snare or a stumbling block or a cause for error. Now, it, it also denotes someone, listen to this, who is caught by their own devices. In other words, it's, it's allowing this thing to take root because of your personal biases or carnal thinking. So, uh, the, the, for the most part, the majority are offended because of their carnal thinking or their biases. Now, that's not to say that there won't be people who actually do something that, that's hurtful or say something that's hurtful. No, no, that's going to happen, okay? But the thing is, I don't let it take root. Yeah, what you said hurt, but I overlooked it, as the word says. Oh, you don't remember that, huh? Let's look at that real quick. Had intended to go here. Huh. Let me show you something real quick, Lee. Oh, okay, I heard that. You don't know how bad it hurt. That, man, that, man, man, that hurt me to my heart. And listen, nobody's excusing the hurt. But if you want to live stress-free, strife-free, stuck free, it's to your advantage that you forgive. We're not saying it felt good. Nobody's denying the hurt. Listen, we're talking to believers, right? And when we do what he says do, it identifies us as being his sons and daughters. <laughs> it shows the world, it shows even other believers and individuals that he or she belongs to Christ. 
Why? Because they respond just like he would. Because as Jesus is, so are we. See, we just think that, uh, that that's beyond casting out demons. We also are to love and forgive, have compassion like Jesus. Oh, sticky, sticky. Are you here? So uh, what, where were we going? We said something about overlooking an offense, didn't we? Isn't that what we said? Okay. Well, let's look at it. Hadn't tend to go here, but we will since you, wanna, since you want me to show you. Proverbs 19.11, Amplify. Let me show you something. <laughs> so here's the thing. Say this. Traps are going to come. It's the trigger of a trap, that, that word offense, scandaling, Greek word. It's to be ensnared. It's, it's simply put, it's when someone does something, daughter, that would potentially cause you to stumble, but you take it. See, that's the dangerous part. You took the bait. You allow that thing to settle, seep, rather than forgiving you. And see, that's when it starts growing. That's where that rage and bitterness comes in. And, and, and I think we overlook what the Word says because of how we feel. But we, we don't walk by feelings. We walk by agreement, faith, trust in God. It's going to be hard. That's why we rely on his strength. Watch this. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his. See, my might ain't no good. My might's no good. Our might wants to clap back. Our might wants to retaliate. Our, our might often seeks revenge. But if we're strong in his might... And in the power of his strength, we're able to do it. Are you here? See, again, guys, the, what, that st what those st statistics also tells us is that 80% of, 80 of Christians live offended. You've seen some. You know, they kind of sit out and stuff in church but they rigid all week long, not nice. And see, it, here's what we think. The rage, it goes from being upset at the offender, and see, then it starts bleeding out in other areas. How many times you heard a message on offense? But we hear messages get us to shout. See, shouting has its place in good, but after you shout, are you forgiving, though? Can you forgive after you done ran through the church? See, that's the real testimony. I've shouted, but I was also able to forgive. Huh. And we have to move beyond wanting people to, you, with this outer exterior wanting people to think we're there. Listen, it will seep through you what's in you. It'll eventually come out. See, we can only do this so long. Huh. Good sense and discretion makes a man what? Slow to anger. And listen to this. And it is his honor And glory to overlook a transgression or an offense without seeking revenge and harboring resentment. Take note of the first half of this proverb. One, it focuses on self-control. Again, that's one of the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. You cannot possess Self-control without the person, power, presence of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it on your own. You need his power infused inside of you. Are you here? The, 
the NLT says sensible people control their temper. Huh. But this word in the Hebrew, this word overlook, it, it literally means to pass over or to simply let it go. Good sense and discretion. Discretion makes a man slow to anger, and it is his honor and glory to let it go. See, watch this. Again, we focus on the hurt. You're letting it go for you, for the sake of your peace, for the sake of your health, <laughs> your happiness. Because here's the thing, I can't go back 5, 10, 15 years and correct what he did, she did, she said, he said. It's done. Now, you can live back there if you want, but if you want a stress-free, strife-free, stuck-free life, I have to get to that place where I can let it go. And let me say this. It's a place of maturity. It's a place of development. You do not get there because you've been coming to church for a long time. Oh, let me say that again. Listen, you don't get to that place, Brother Kenwood. I said that right, right? Kentwood, Kenwood, you, Ken. Watch this. It's not a place you arrive at, sir, because you've been saved. Five years. See, you don't get to that place of letting it go because you've been a member of Shekinah Glory since you was a baby. No. You get there through maturity. And how do I mature? I respond every time that thing happens the way God says I respond. And when I do that, it keeps strengthening me and building me spiritually. Listen, so to overlook an offense, it literally means to pass over it. Let it go. Do you know how mature you have to be when somebody says something slanderous to you and you laugh? At <laughs> I'm good, sir. I'm not even going to retaliate. Listen, I'm going to overlook that. I'm, I'm going to let that go. See, that's, that's, that's maturity. That's Christ. Because here's the thing, in case you didn't know, people are going to say things perhaps that you don't like. And while we're here, notice we said four ways that these seeds of offense are sown into you. What people did not say to you, what people did say to you, what people did not do for you. And what people did to you. So people are offended because of what wasn't said. You could have thanked me for cooking. See, see, is, is that why you cook for me to thank you? Because if that's why you're cooking, you can always be topsy-turvy. Thank you. I appreciate it. But don't let that twist and bend you out of shape if no one says that it's a trick. <laughs> it's a play, it's a trick to get you stuck. See that? What they said to you. That's why it, you have to be all the more careful to guard your heart. The scripture says this, and we said this early on in this teaching. Be careful how you hear. Sometimes we, see, and here's the thing. Oh, and I said this before. The first thing that goes when you get offended is your hearing. That's why a brother offended is harder than when he doesn't, want to, he doesn't want to hear what you have to say. She doesn't want to hear what you have to say. To overlook an offense is to take no notice of wrongs done against you. It's 
to refuse to retaliate. It's to let affronts go. It's to simply forgive. So when you overlook it, when you let it go, you're saying, what, in essence, what you're saying is, man, I forgive you. I'm not even about to let that thing get in me. See, again, it's not the offense. It's when you let it take root. It's when you don't let it go. <laughs> you hear? Because it's coming. Uh, let me see. Uh huh. Let me see what I can use. Hmm. That's your water. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Catch that for. Okay. Now listen. Offenses are gonna come. You can't stop them from coming. Okay. They're gonna come. They're gonna come. But the problem is, is it's not that they're not coming. Where the problem comes in is when you hold on to it. See, I don't have to hold it. See, see, when you, when you let it go, you, you, you simply give it back to them. Return to sender. I'm overlooking. But the, the, see, 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 when you hold on to it, that's when you start plotting, planning. Are you here? And then you become saturated in that foolishness. Why? Because you refuse to let it go. Like I said some time ago, it's like, see, we, we, when someone offends you, they give you the chain and the key and the lock. And saying, here, I'm trapping you, and you can either free yourself or let yourself out. Hold on. Anytime you choose. <laughs> let, let, you can pray about it all day, but you still have to let it. Are you here? So, so it's when you hold it that it becomes dangerous. Notice, just like I gave it back to him, and see what, uh, now put a little speed on it. See? <laughs> see, that hurt. Cause it, hit, it hurt. But still, I threw it back. We're not denying that it didn't hurt. But still, Still, it's my choice. See, again, even though, again, we focus on the hurt. But still, it's my choice whether I can sit there, oh, and, and, oh he ain't happy. <laughs> Guys, this is a place of maturity. 80, let, let me help you out. 80% of Christians, Minister K, live in our family. 80% or more. Are you here? So it's, it's when you hold it. So, again, it's coming. Nobody's saying it's not coming. But when it comes, you have to overlook it. For, you see, what you're saying is return to sender. I'm, in other words, to return to sender says, I don't accept this. I don't receive this. Just like you get wrong mail, wrong address. This is not for me. Because if I Keep it, it's going to create trouble. See, we think it might create. No, it's going to create trouble. So you have to let it go. Are you here? Now, so, so it, it's to 
simply is to, why did, how, why did we end up, what we supposed to be in Second Peter? So it's simply to forget. So it, I, I keep hearing, we, we keep getting stuck on what they said, what they did. And see, Pastor, see, you, you, you can't identify with that because it didn't happen to you. See, Jesus never said, see, see. It, okay, I, I, okay, agree. Maybe I, I don't know what it's like to not have a father. Raising house with a father. Maybe you're holding, you know, that against father, whatever situation may be. But as a believer, if you are to be like, Jesus is in the earth when he was here physically. As he is, so are we. Then you should respond like. Now, let me, let me say this. We talk about how bad things are. What about what he had to endure? Watch this. So we wouldn't have to be stuck. What about what he endured, daughter? So we could live a stress-free, strife-free, stuck-free life. It's almost like he went through all that so we could still be stuck? No way. I'm not even going to do him that way. I want to show him that I appreciate what you did for me. No, it doesn't feel good. Yes, Lord, I'm going to need your help day by day, but nonetheless, I'm giving it back to the sender. So, so, so the, to that overlook it means to let it go. In, in other words, it's to forgive. Now, let me, let me say this. The word forgive, listen to this, is built on the same root word as the word grace. And it means to bestow favor unconditionally. Y'all just miss what I said. Now, you don't want one to go here, so since I'm winning, listen to me. Okay? It is built on the same root word as the word grace, charis. And it means to bestow favor unconditionally. I hear that, Sister Walker. Sister, too. It's not going to be easy. Nobody says it's going to be easy. Again, greater is he that is in me. We, we, we're weak, yes. 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 Even after you come out the closet after seven hours of prayer, you're still weak. You're weak. Yes, you are. Now, you may be stronger spiritually because we edify ourselves when we pray in Holy Spirit. So you'll be strengthened, but still, even in that, you need to rely on his power. That's why he is called our helper. <laughs> what does a helper supposed to do? Help. And guess what most believers fail to do? Rely on their help. And here's the amazing thing. It works if we do it. And when you respond the way he, he responds, there's like a supernatural charge that comes over you. And you be like, you, you, you amaze yourself when you respond. And see, when you respond, that's what activates that power and gives him an opportunity to go to work. Are you here? So, and listen, so it's to bestow favor unconditionally. So understanding that, you realize that forgiving is not probation. 
What do you mean? Merely suspending the sentence under supervision and specific conditions. Y'all missed that. Did you hear what I just said? Sometimes, you know, it's, it's, it's a probation type of forgiveness. All right? If you act right, if you do this or if you do that, that's not what true forgiveness is. Matter of fact, when you understand agape, unconditional, not based on conditions. If you forgive me first, then I'll see. Where's that scripture? And that's what a lot of people do. Seeking a response. That's not what unconditional love does. It loves because that's what it's, it, it's its nature to love. It doesn't understand. It, 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 it can't do anything but love. It's going to always respond the right way. Are you here? Notice it says, good sense and insight. Psalms 119, 165. Let me show you something. Watch this. I, I wanted to show you this uh, because when we go back to Peter, when I, notice I said good sense and insight. One of those indispensable qualities is knowledge. To have insight of the Word of God. Great peace have they which and do you see this in your word? And what? And nothing. That's Bible. So, properly understood, offenses are going to come. So, where it says, and nothing shall offend them, in other words, you are such a lover of God's word that when things try to come and entrap you, you respond the way the word says to respond. So, as a result, that thing did not have an opportunity to take root. So I didn't stumble. And if I respond like that every time the enemy tries to approach me with an offense, I will never stumble because my response is always in line with the Word of God. I do what he says to do. So a lover of God's Word is someone who responds according to the Word of God. Let me show you. You hear? See, We want to get to that place where when you lie down, you rest, not just sleep. <laughs> it's a huge difference. So just because, see, you, you could sleep for eight hours and get up just as tired, tired and fatigued, but you could rest for two and feel like you slept ten. And again, holding it hurts you more than the offender. Wonder how many believers have been taken out of here because of offense. Some, and I and I, I'll be the first to tell you, everything's not hereditary, generational. What well, could be generational habits and tendencies, things that you've seen other people do. But everything's not, thank you, a curse. It's not your diet. Some things people have because of them harboring and taking offense. 
self-inflicted themselves, not God, because they chose crystal to hold on to it, harbor it, and it starts deterior. They start to deteriorate from the inside out. Mad, ain't just imagine just carrying that around and never releasing it. What do you think it's doing? But here, here, here's here's the the part that amazes me. People willingly see that that takes a lot of energy to on purpose, willfully stay there. I'm not going to forgive you. I ain't ready to forgive. Listen. If you're waiting to be ready, you will never get, you will never be ready to forgive. If you wait into, so for the believer, there has to be a forgiveness up front. And Lord, now I need you to help me get through this. But see, why do you say that? Well, if you hold it, beloved, it's going to get worse. So it's to your advantage that I forgive today. Now watch the trigger the enemy, because the longer I hold it, the less you are inclined to want to forgive because of the old. See, that's the trick. Well, watch this. And Christians tickle me with it. Well, the Lord knows my heart. Okay, and we, we know that. I'm just saying, show me where he gives us an out to hold on to it. I'm waiting. Chapter, book, verse Now, we got plenty of scripture, Brother Damon, where we are told to forgive. But none to tell us, oh, well, you just hold it until you, feel, till you, till, till you feel ready. I understand. See, if you're hearing that voice, that's the enemy. Mm, not many amens on that one. If something's telling you to hold on to it until you get ready, I trust you, that's not God telling you to hold it until you get ready to let it go. So is that a place that, where we can arrive? Yes. Now, let me show you something else. 1 John 4, 3. And I guess we'll start in Peter next week. Because, <laughs> and the Lord is true. There's no rush because... So many are gripped with this. I'm telling you, that's, that is a terrible place to be where, where, where you are allowing the actions of another person to dictate your response and everything you do like that. Don't give that person that kind of power. And as I said before, while you are, you in general, not anyone here, but while those individuals are harboring and holding it, the people who cause the offense, again, you know what they're doing? They're living their best life that they know how. What, what did we say? Are you here? Huh. Well, I can sense that 80% today. Boy, y'all, <laughs> uh -huh. just let it go. Just like another TKO. First, <laughs> to love God's law, beloved, is to live in agreement with his word. In other words, you do what it says. Let me show you this, First John 5. Three amplified version. Watch this. For true lovers of God. Let, 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 just let me do a little survey. Anybody here believers? All the believers raise your hand. Huh, great, ooh, great deal of believers. That's good. Now, think very carefully. 
before you raise your hand on this next question. Let me do a screenshot of all the hands raised. <laughs> How many true lovers of God in the house? Not so many hands up this time. Wait, let's, how many believers? How many lovers of God? Okay. For the true love of God is this, that we what? Habitually what? Keep his, now his commandments again, talking about his word, his precepts, his laws. Don't, not the ten commandments. Again, there were 600 and something laws that Israel couldn't keep. So we're not talking about the Ten Commandments. His word is identified as his commands. So we habitually keep his what? Commandments. Oh, here we go again. And remain focused on we what? On his precepts and his commandments. Excuse me. And his commandments and precepts are what? Not difficult to obey. They're not difficult to obey. Watch this. So my job is to, when the offense come, Okay, all these suggestions that I'm getting. <laughs> See, you played right into it. I want you to do the same thing. In about 30 minutes, when you're sitting in Applebee's, eating off the 10 for 1 appetizer menu, And the waitress is slow about bringing your fourth cup of sweet tea with your diabetic <laughs> sugar eating sweet potato pie. <sighs> but hey, it's the same way. Y'all was quick to tell pastor, oh, see how hypocritical we could be? And some of y'all, I've been trying to get you to forgive since you've been here, and you still talking about, we, I'm almost ready. What do you mean, you almost ready? So remember that. And see how, see how we, oh, forget it, let it go. Pa pa pass, no, don't let that get you. <laughs> it what gets me, Latoine, I say the same thing to the, to the, to the saints. But did y'all hear me say, you know how, you see how hard he threw it? He could have been a little sweeter. <laughs> but that's what, the same way everybody was, it, ooh, it just sounds so sweet. Even how you said, Forgive, Pastor. Let it go. No, don't take that. He ain't mean it. <laughs> How you know what the man meant? <laughs> he don't know what he's doing. But see, it, it, this is how you respond. It's not for me, sir. Now, remember, you're going to have an opportunity to do this in a few minutes. On your way home, couples. You're not going to talk to me? 
Now, Pastor just said, I don't want to hear what Pastor said. <laughs> but we, but we just left church. For the shoe love again. Watch this. Here's what I want you to focus on. We habitually keep his commandments. And see, and remain focused on, or you can say his word. Throw it again. So when offense comes, my job is to remain focused on his word. See that? I ain't studying the offense. Most people want to do is nurse the offense. No. No, 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 no. One of them's got to go. Either I'm going to nurse the offense or remain focused on the word. I can't, look, look. I cannot do both effectively at the same time. One of them has to lead. You missed what I just said. One of these is given has to lead. I cannot respond to both simultaneously and be effective. So either I'm going to focus on this or focus on his precepts. And what messes people up, they try to do both. And really what they're doing when it comes to the word, if I'm still holding this, I'm walking in deception. Why? Because I'm just now, I'm just, I, now I have reduced myself to just being a hearer of the word. And James says, when you hear only and do not do, you deceive yourselves. So we're deceiving ourselves, that, you know, with, with, the, with all these little colloquialism. How, how you doing? God is good. And all the time, and all the time, God is good. I, and we say the little fancy words, and we know how to do all the. But rotting from the inside out. Because we won't just release it and focus on what his word says. Second Peter 1, verse 5. And we'll pick up here next week. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I have four imitations, four imitations. Listen, beloved. Sir, if you're here today in person or viewing social media, listen, ma'am. I want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Savior and Lord. No other name has been given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Jesus declared that he is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe that with everything within me, not because someone said it, because I have had a personal encounter, personal experience that he is the difference maker. And if on today you've never accepted him as Savior and Lord, I want to give you this opportunity to do it now. Listen, it does not matter where you are in life, it doesn't matter what you've done, what you're presently doing. Forgiveness has already been made available for you. While you were yet sinners, the word of God declares he died for you. He loved you, gave himself for you. So I admonish you, if you feel the presence of the Lord tugging your heart, accept him on today. It's just a matter of acknowledging the fact that you are a sinner in need of his saving grace. And if this is you, sir, ma'am, I admonish you again. Receive him as Savior and Lord. The word of God declares in Romans 10, 9, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Again, there's no begging. There's no pleading. It's just a matter of accepting. And if that is you, if you made that profession of faith, 
Ma'am, sir, we rejoice with you now. And we say welcome to the family of believers. Now, the next appeal, we have been talking about, and if you've been following us for some time, you know that we have been dealing in the area of offense for some time now. We've been talking about unforgiveness, harboring bitterness, resentment, rage. Perhaps you are someone who is in that place where, again, we're not forfeiting the pain. We're not denying the offense. And perhaps it really did hurt. But that's still not a legitimate reason, based upon the word, to carry it. And maybe you are at that place today where you want to forgive, but you still need some strength. I want to pray with you. I want to touch and come into agreement with you that today, because you made that decision, that God will give you the strength day by day. No one said it never. We never said. I never said it's going to be easy. But I trust you. Trust you me. It will be worth it. So if that's you, I want you to just stretch your hands. Even if you're here, stretch your hands. If you're here, lift your hands up. And if you're watching, just stretch your hands towards whatever device you're watching. Father, I thank you now for these persons. Anyone who has made that decision today to forgive and let it go, I thank you for a supernatural refreshing. I decree and declare that your power is made available to all who are weak in this area. And let this be a day of new beginnings where because they relied on you, they will now begin to live in that land of living a stress-free, strife-free, stuck-free life. Listen, if that was you and you chose to forgive today, we want to hear from you also. Reach out to us. We want to congratulate you on your newfound freedom. Amen. Now, listen, guys, again, this is a message of maturity, being that you do not get there over time just because time lapses. You have to be intentional about responding to the Word of God. So, and I want you, be it here uh, or even watching, tune in next week. Because we're going to get back to those seven indispensable qualities that Peter encourages us that we should supplement our faith with these qualities. And he said, if you do these things, you will never stumble, which confirms the word in Psalms 119, 165. Those who love God's word, nothing will cause them to stumble. So I want you to join us next week also. Now, it's time to worship the Lord in the area of our giving. Listen, listen on the screen are several ways whereby you can support the ongoing work here at SGFC. Now, let me say this. The Word of God lets us know whenever we come to the sanctuary, we are to bring and offering. You should never come to the place of worship empty-handed. No, you're not paying for the word. You can't buy the word. But my giving is a response. Uh, uh, is showing God not only do I honor you, but there is a gratitude for the dispensing of your word. So this is an opportunity to show your gratitude, show your appreciation, and to give God thanks and praises. Listen, without him, we can do nothing. And whenever we tithe, that is an acknowledgement, according to Hebrews, that Jesus still lives. And another thing that our tithe symbolizes, uh, uh, symbolizes is it, it's a symbol that God is our source. He is my supplier. He is my sustainer. What you're in, essence, you're in essence, you're saying, I cannot do what I do without him. So this is a sign of appreciation. It's a sign of of gratitude. And with that 90% left over, whatever he says for you to do, I admonish you, just do it. Well, beloved, um, listen, we certainly hope that you enjoyed your time with us on today. We certainly look forward to seeing you same time, same place, right here next week. We love you with the love of Jesus. Bye-bye. Come on, let's give the Lord a